um, so most of the literature on activism or popular one would be Gandhi, would be MLK, and of course they are like the picture of nonviolence, and that's how I get into understanding or introduce the concept of nonviolence. But I would consider I'm actually a practitioners of nonviolence movement much earlier. Uh, like I, I remember when I was, I think I was six years old when I was in a playground. I heard a lot of kid using racial slur um, against the, uh, the the other uh, uh, the the Indian or Pakistani kid. Um, so I yell at the, the, the Chinese kid. I, I like told them, you shouldn't do it. Like, you know, you have no right. Like something like that. Um, and, and it feels empowering um, to just stand up for, you know, someone. In 2014, I, I was in my fourth year of universities. I just stepped down from my presidentships of student government at that time. And... Um, uh, the society at that time has a very long, like more than 13 months long of discussions about universal suffrage and how we can achieve universal suffrage. Because uh, a little bit background about Hong Kong is uh, even though China do promise uh, universal suffrage and democracy and guarantees of human rights, in an international treaty that was signed in 1984 between Britain and, and, and China, uh, the promise was never materialized. And people were very frustrated and disappointed about the delay. And they also see a uh, gradual deterioration of human rights um, back then. Um, so um, a law professor <laughs> of um, of the universities of Hong Kong, Benny Tai uh, has proposed this idea about civil mass civil disobedience, occupying streets and causing disruptions um, as a way to gain leverage for Hong Kong people to um, achieve universal suffrage. This idea that people should use non-violent disruption as the major tactics resonate. And it also takes deep root um, among the protesters where at the first few weeks of um, the umbrella movement, uh, people will hold hand in hands as a human chain when they face police uh, firing uh, pepper spread or using baton to, you know, trying to disperse them. Like people would not fight back. Um, it was after several weeks of violence from both the police and long stay actor, uh, AKA Polk government supporter that punch protesters or drag protesters or using, you know, violence against protesters. Then some of the protesters in the umbrella movement starting to use relatively higher confrontational tactics, i.e. building shields for themselves or folding water bottles uh, to police officers who are in riot gear. So in a way, like the, in a very strict nonviolent sense, like folding water bottle like, or you know, pushing back uh, a police call and not using your shield amounts to uh, violence tactic. But if you use it, if you, if you view it in a comparative sense, in a relative sense, no, not, not so much. Um, and we see this constantly throughout the last 12 years from our river spring to the umbrella movement to the Ukraine Maidan movement, to the um, uh, to the farmer protests in India, to 2019 uh, uh, protests, where protesters and ordinary citizens have more tour, aka social media's uh, connectivities to various resources that allows them to become a leader themselves. 
that allows them to become a leading figure who can propose alternative strategies and tactics. I, I don't see the preference of violences of non violency in an absolute contradiction. I see it as a tension between people's perception in what constitutes effective in bringing the change they want to see. Mm -hmm. So the angle is kind of the same, but the pathway is um, different. And that difference is cause uh, sometimes mocking each other or e even demeaning uh, to each other. Um, so I'm not saying this tension is it do not need to be resolved, but as organizers or just ordinary protesters, we should approach this tensions with more vigilancies and with humbleness. Although, like, I'm not like I'm not a pure nonviolent practitioner, like. But I try to um, do as much as I can and, and always think about alternatives uh, of violence. Nonviolency doesn't mean refrain from any uh, use of force, but we have to use force justly and also in a proportional manner. I stand with you, Brain. I, I, I am think like I have friends that are that are right in Kiev right now, you know, who is fighting. Um, and as nonviolent practitioner, even though we are not like holding arms, we could not because we are not in Ukraine, we are not at the front line. There's so much we can do. One being reduce the will to fight among the Russian side communicating with Russia, supporting the anti-war protesters that has put their body at the front line in St. Petersburg and also in Moscow, denouncing their leader or co-and-co-leader co -leader, um, to go to war. Um, I, I seen this very great example and it, this is a very good inspiration for me.